one. Hey, we're back. We're going to do a, another video with another nice torso model. This is a gentleman. So we had a lady last time. We got a guy this time. So we'll see at least one different thing. And we're going to start in the torso again. We got a nice pink lung right here. Not really much of a smoker, this guy. And we got our blood vessels in the lung. We got the red ones, which are the pulmonary veins. Remember, it's flip-flop for your pulmonary circuit. Blue ones are the pulmonary arteries. Other lung has been removed, so we don't see it over there. But we do see the nice big aorta. We see the nice sort of shepherd's crook looking thing right here. We got the aortic arch. We got the descending thoracic aorta with intercostal arteries coming off of it, going between the ribs. And you can almost see the bumps of the ribs. You can hear the bumps of the ribs in there. Back up to our aortic arch. We got our three branches, brachiocephalic on the right. And we don't really see him branching. He's going to split into a common carotid and a subclavian on the right, but we don't really see that in this model because we got these muscles in the way. And we do have our left common carotid artery here. We see it coming up, paralleling the trachea again. And we don't see it splitting, but if we twist him ever so gently. We can see his internal carotid artery coming up right there, piercing the floor of the cranium to get into the brain. If we rotate back, we do see our subclavian artery on the left-hand side right there. Behind the clavicle, again, remember subclavian behind the clavicle. And that's pretty much it for arteries above the diaphragm. Let's keep going with arteries. Let's follow our aorta down. We get our descending abdominal aorta here in the abdominal cavity. We see our first big branch, the celiac artery right there. And we, we know the celiac artery. Celiac's got three syllables, so it's got three branches. Hepatic, gastric, and splenic to the liver, stomach, and spleen, respectively. We get out a little bit more. We got our superior mesenteric artery, which is going to feed the small intestine and a good chunk of the large intestine. We've got our renal arteries on each side going to our kidneys. We go down a little bit more and we see our testicular arteries on both sides going all the way down, all the way down, going through the inguinal canal, getting down to the scrotum. You might wonder, well, why, is, why does this artery start all the way up here and go all the way down there? Well, in development, in the embryo, the testes are going to start their development up in higher in the pelvis, and they're going to wander down. Artery grows along with them. Okay, keep going. Inferior mesenteric artery, feeding much of the distal large intestine. Keep going down. we got our common iliac arteries. Remember, we do not have these in a cat. Common iliac arteries are going to split. We get an internal iliac artery feeding the pelvic organs and an external iliac artery coming down, piercing the pelvic diaphragm, and it becomes the femoral artery when we get out into the thigh. So let's work our way back up with our veins. We got our femoral vein. We come in, it becomes the external iliac vein, which meets the internal iliac vein. I wonder if I lean in too much, does my hair get in the way? I think it does. The internal iliac vein meets the external iliac vein, and we get a common iliac vein. You see a little better on this side, I suppose we should switch over here. There's the common iliac vein, internal, external, common. Two commons unite and become the inferior vena cava, which we see coming up. We see our renal veins right here, draining the kidneys, and we see our ovarian veins. Here is the right ovarian vein going right. Did I say ovarian? What did I mean to say? Testicular. I meant to say testicular because this is a boy. The gratuitous close up. So we got our testicular vein on the right hand side going into the inferior vena cava. On the left hand side, we've got the testicular vein going up into the renal vein on the left. Now you might be wondering why don't we have a why don't we see a superior mesenteric vein and inferior mesenteric vein? Well, we got that whole hepatic portal system. And so we don't have though any veins from our intestines, stomach, pancreas going directly into the inferior vena cava. They've got to go into the liver first, and this is where our imaginary liver is going to sit. So we don't have that here. If we keep going back up, we are going to be in the thorax, and we got our superior vena cava up here. We see our superior vena cava is formed by two brachiocephalic veins 
long on the left, short on the right. The brachiocephalic vein is going to split right here and give us an internal jugular vein. And its next door neighbor here is the external jugular vein. Subclavian vein then going out underneath the clavicle. And if we jump over to this side and we get into the armpit region here, we do see the axillary vein right there. And with that, we are done with model number two. See you later.